Today we're going to talk about empirical and molecular formulas. Before I get to what an empirical formula is and how we find it, I want to show you some of the similarities and differences between empirical and molecular formulas. So, for example, the molecular formula for butane is C4H10, meaning in one molecule of butane there are literally four carbons and ten hydrogens. Its empirical formula is C2H5. What did I do to this to get that? I reduced it. Both 4 and 10 are divisible by 2. So if I wanted to go from there to there, dividing everything by 2, what this tells me is that I have a ratio of 2 carbons for every 5 hydrogens. Let's look at a different one. How about C6H12? What would this one's empirical formula be? What number goes into both 6 and 12? 6 does. I could reduce it to CH2. What about if I gave you one like this? CH4. Is that reducible? No. So in this case, the empirical and the molecular are the same. Going from molecular to empirical is rather easy. Going from empirical to molecular is a bit trickier. Here's why. Suppose I give you CH2O as the empirical formula. What reduces to CH2O? A whole lot of things, literally an infinite number of things. So if I wanted you to go from empirical to molecular, you can't without more information. Because it could be CH2O, it could be C2H4O, Two, it could be C3H6O3, you get the idea, I'm not going to go on forever. But what if you are told that the molecular weight of the compound is 180? Now this narrows it down a lot. I could either do guess and check and see which one has a molecular weight of 180, but there's a better, more systematic approach to it. Only one of these is going to have the correct molecular weight, and it might not even be one of the ones I've listed. Here's how we approach it. We get the molecular weight of the empirical. Carbon, two hydrogens, plus one oxygen gives us a total of 30. Then what I want to see is 30 times what number will give me 180? Meaning, what do I have to multiply this by to get to my goal? Well, 30 goes into 180 six times. So if I took this and multiplied by 6, giving me C6H12O6, I now have the correct molecular formula that has the correct molecular weight and reduces to my empirical formula. There's one for you to try where I give you an empirical formula and a molecular weight and I ask you for the molecular formula. 